I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time watching our, our interviews. We appreciate it. Um, I'm really happy today to introduce to you Kevin Cardone. Appreciate you coming. Cardon, Cardone. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty name. Anyway, appreciate you coming and sharing your story. It's very interesting. Glad and, to be here. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in Lehigh. Okay. Grew up. Okay. Were you always a member of the church? Were you born in the covenant, as they yeah, say? Yeah, or? I was. Me right. and my brothers, my uh, sister, we uh, enjoyed Lehigh. Yeah. Did, had a lot of fun and, there. And active <laughs> in the church. A lot of members there, of course. And yeah. Uh, heavy concentration. So just did all the normal thing, primary and scouts. Yeah, and primary scouts and hiking. Just pretty much an average Utah. Yeah, your I, par parents active. I and, would say, yeah. Yeah. And went to church every Sunday. Just, our, just your life, right? Camping and... Yeah. Scouts stuff, <laughs> merit badges. It's interesting how that just becomes our whole life, isn't it? I mean, it just every, all of our activities and our our life is just centered around. It. Did, you, did you take seminary? Yeah, yeah. I took as I got older. I was ordained uh, a deacon, teacher, and priest, okay. and paid tithing. Work <laughs> work for f local farmers. Yeah. In the summers and paper routes, it was. Yeah. Just and uh, seminary was was okay. I have to think hard about, <laughs> about it. That time, yeah, that was a few years ago, I guess. So you end up going on a mission. Was that something you had always planned on doing? Yeah, it's. I felt it was the right thing to do. I mean, yeah. I uh, tried to do the right thing. I would yeah. say I, I I knew I made mistakes. I, sure. I, we weren't perfect, right? <laughs> I did worry about them. I, I struggled against sin as a teenager. I, sure. uh, I didn't. I wasn't an alcoholic. I wasn't a, a druggie. I, I tried to yeah. follow. The, I was convinced. I read the Book of Mormon also as a teenager, and I thought it was true. Yeah, prayed, I, ab prayed about it, and yeah, yeah. I as, as a missionary. So the the preparation for the mission. The, the teachers sure. kind of get you ready. They and and um, want you to have a good testimony of the church and so on. Where did yeah. you go on your mission? I went to Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Mission. I was in New Jersey also. Wow. And the good experience. Yeah, I worked hard. I baptized a, <laughs> at least a dozen. I yeah. I I did write them till. <laughs> Not too long ago, I I'd write them again. They, they kind of cut me off. I don't know. Oh, you've written them since your yeah. Transition. I can't, they were friends and mm, interesting. Um, I worked hard. We knocked on a lot of doors. We knocked on whole towns. <laughs> Some towns wouldn't even let you in. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> so you came home from your mission, and then what happens in life? Well, just school. Um, when I was on my mission, there was a new church history. I, I read 
<clears throat> various books like uh, Miracle of Forgiveness sure. and Essentials in Church History, Jesus the Christ, all the books they recommended us to read. And a new church history came out called The Story of the Latter-day Saints. Hmm. And it was published by uh, Deseret, but in cooperation. It was, it was like an official church yeah. publication. And so it was in, published in 1976, and I bought it. It was at a zone conference, and I read it. It seemed much better. It, there was pictures, and there were footnotes, and... Yeah. Um, did it strengthen your testimony, or did it, it raise questions? It seemed to, no. Yeah. It, it, and really there on the mission, uh, talking to people was the first non-Mormons I had talked to. In your whole life, <laughs> so, probably, yeah. Right, so they gave me books and tracts, and I read them. We had little debates. and, yeah. and like Anything any, ever challenge your testimony? Well, some, but <clears throat> I guess not enough. That I was. Just, well, you were on your mission. Just, too. yeah, I, mean, I had so, limited time to sure. to to study whatever books I I read most of the books and tracks I yeah. got, and so when I got back, I I did start reading, looking up some of the references in that book. Oh, you did. That was so. Uh, there were articles about uh, Book of Mormon tr translation. Um, just regular history. Yeah. Um, Again, anything that raised questions? Or? Well, that, it, it was, uh, <clears throat> they referred to BYU Studies and Dialogue Magazine. Oh. So BYU Studies was okay. I, I sure. would buy some issues. I would read them at the BYU library. Yeah. And I subscribed to Dialogue for a few years. Hmm. And then some questions began, <laughs> began to surface more. Now you were also you went to BYU. You graduated in right in you engineering and electrical engineering. Okay. So it was it was work. It was a, a lot of work. Uh, I didn't have I'd say a lot of friends. I didn't. I mean I'm studying physics and <laughs> yeah. a lot of math and stuff. Just trying to get through. I was I was glad to get out and. Yeah. Um, well, I, did you took the institute? Right. Did that raise any questions? Anything Not there? Too much. I took like a comparative religions class and Book of Mormon. You have to yeah, take. I'm sure. Trying to remember. I took a Pearl of Great Price from Hugh Nibley. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, that's that's quite commendable, I guess. Oh, now you were mentioning in the dialogue discussions and so on. Did you ever talk to anybody about some of the questions that were a coming little, up? A little bit. I had some roommates that uh, one was a, a librarian, worked at the library some, and and they were a lot more familiar. This was also at the time of the Salamander Letter. There John, were a John lot of Hoffman. Uh, the Hoffman Mark there were Hoffman, rumors so. about it. And yeah. they had more issues. They had read it more. <clears throat> that was what I was thinking about. This was kind of the old days, and a lot of issues weren't discussed. A lot of yeah, no, for sure. Personal problems. You, you maybe with your bishop once, a, <laughs> once in a while. Um, in our family, I mean, I never had big problems like I was. Yeah, I would say, but there. But, and uh, just a lot of issues. Well, one, I took a genealogy class also, and I was going to mention this later. And we had to write some family histories, and I asked my dad to write something about his dad, and, and he wrote there about him more than I had known yeah. because he died before I was born. And my dad at the end of it said, unfortunately, his father was an alcoholic. Oh. And it was a disease that uh, greatly affects I mean, affects him and the family, and so that was the first that had been mentioned hmm. in my life. So, and I didn't know anything about it either. I'm like, okay, and so I I, I went to work and after graduation, you mean? graduation, yeah. I got a job in Las Vegas, and I, I'm working there, and and this was a that book too called an ancient american setting for the book of mormon mm -hmm. and so i'm <clears throat> i'm studying and thinking and and my testimony was weaker 
because of these issues? You mean thinking about these? Yeah, problems? just uh, how the Book of Mormon was translated was it's it's still not really commonly talked about. It's not denied. Yeah. Well, now I they've think. admitted it in their essays that uh, yeah, there so, was a seer stone and. So I didn't feel like, well, I can say I know it's true. There, there was a question. Yeah. I'm like, who, who would believe this? You know, <laughs> if you really look at the, the, the eyewitnesses yeah. who were there, his wife. Uh, and why did they change the history to make it more palatable or something? Yeah, that, even uh, essentials why, in church history. Why lie about it, yeah. Seemed pretty whitewashed. Yeah. I mean, everybody would admit there's no mention of polygamy. Yeah. Or one, one little paragraph and... And actually, the story of the Latter Day Saints didn't talk about a lot of things either. It no, just I'm seemed, sure it didn't. <laughs> it seemed better. Yeah, <laughs> it seemed, and they actually didn't publish it for like 20 years. So mm. you wonder. I mean, there wasn't a lot in it, but um, I'll try to. So I got another job, and it, there were uh, news on TV about children of alcoholics. I, I had an alcoholic roommate in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And I borrowed him money, things happened, Not, nothing really bad. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go drinking with him, but <laughs> and I'm mostly going to church. And um, so I seen an ad for a 12-step program for, it, it said something like, has your life been affected by alcohol? So I, I went to it and Just I was curious, I guess. Yeah, yeah, somewhat. I had a little more knowledge, but not a lot. And and I really felt at home there. That was I felt like people understood me more because of your back. I mean, your grandpa and your yeah, your, just your roommate. And, I mean, I'd tell anybody to to read a little on alcoholism. I mean, it affects the whole family. I mean, yeah. it affects. Maybe generations. I there's there's experts on it. I'm yeah, not yeah. one. And I and what did you learn there? I mean, what was well, helpful? The twelve steps of AA they adapt for Al-Anon, and and I'm only going from some years ago memory. I can't remember which step was made a de. Let's see. Admitted we had a problem with alcohol. I think that's the first step. The second was made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God, as we understood Him. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that sounds like what born again Christians say. <laughs> so I'm like, so I I got a, a big book. I got a 12-step book and Al-Anon books and pamphlets, and I'm and I'm reading it pretty close. And I'm, I enjoyed the meetings and the people. I had some friends. And the discussions were about expressing your feelings or yeah. um, acknowledging your anger. It was just regular life stuff. It, yeah. it was, but, but it was honest yeah. and, and, and forthright. You, well, and keep going. and <laughs> uh, Dr. Bob from Alcoholics Anonymous said in a pamphlet, in a, he said, before there was the 12 steps, there was the five absolutes. I guess absolute honesty, to be honest with yourself and others. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, and that, to me, they're using the Bible. And the Bible has results. So it, it made me think. I'm like, boy, here's, here's a different way of uh, approaching problems. And I had enough questions from the Book of Mormon. Things um, that you'd put on the shelf, as we always say, I guess. Yeah, they're... <laughs> Uh, the temple, I went to the temple, we're not mentioning that. The, the temple seemed quite strange to me. Yeah. And I never felt like, I. oh, I want to go there all the time. <laughs> you didn't have that feeling. And huh? No. It is strange, and many have said that. And yeah. so, and am I worthy anyway? You know, are you? am I worthy to go to heaven? Yeah. You know, I still, from the miracle of forgiveness, I, I still remember... I, I remembered from my read it a couple of times uh, toward the toward the end page I think the old edition 354 <laughs> says the former transgressor the, yeah. re, the repentance that merits forgiveness is the former transgressor reaches a point of no return to sin where even the desire or urge to sin is cleared out of his life <laughs> I no I if I didn't sin I wanted to yeah sometimes I so can I say I'm forgiven 
on what basis? Yeah. For am I so good? So <clears throat> the the real thing that that made the difference. I said I've got to read the Bible. Wow. I've got to read How the remarkable. New Testament <laughs> and see what it really says. Yeah. Now I'm I'm in this crossroads here. I've got to check. So I'm I'm reading like a book or two or three books a night. I'm reading the book of Romans in a, a night. Or And are you feeling like you're reading this with Mormon eyes or with just well, an objective view of trying things? Trying to, what does it really say? What trying to, really a say? more honest approach. Like Before that. when I read the book of Mormon, I always, you had to balance it or whatever. Yeah. Well, this outweighed that. And so as a missionary, I mean, there's, that's how I would handle it, rather than more straightforward. Yeah. Um, well, in, in Mormonism, we always kind of cherry-pick the scriptures that right. were used out of the Bible, at least. and Emphasize something yeah, above. Never read it in context or anything. So, so how did that go, reading the Bible? Well, so I'm reading Galatians, Ephesians, you know, yeah. Philippians, and Colossians. I urge any listeners, read, read those books. Yeah. They're powerful. To us, they're the most powerful words in the world. Yeah. Uh, Ephesians, read the first chapter and, and then the first of the second. Yeah. The, the chapter 2, Ephesians says, we were, were by nature children of wrath. And all of us, we deserve wrath yeah. from God. So uh, after reading this, I mean, for weeks, for some weeks, for a month, and I actually got another translation just to compare a little, and I was digging a little. And uh, somebody invited me to church, uh, uh, an Assembly of God church. I, I went about that time. A Christian invited you this, to the church? <laughs> yeah, somebody from the 12 step okay. group. And I went. And, what did you think of that? Well, I liked it. Uh, we're singing, clapping, we're happy, people are happy. And did you notice a difference between the worship? Ten, tending toward Jesus or yes. a man, so to speak, and you wouldn't. It just doesn't happen, does it, in in Christian churches? It's always about Jesus. Yes, yeah. the the sermons were good and the the singing, and so I was just let me interject here. Um, as I was reading those books, uh, it said three or four times uh, all the epistles, and and there came a a day. I thought I had to decide. Is, that's what it says. Uh, where I read, uh, we're by nature children of wrath, yeah. and all of us. Uh, and saved by grace. And, and, some of those and that we're saved by grace. I said, that's what it says. Yeah. It says it over and over. And I had to decide is, do I believe this or do I not believe it? Or was and, it translated and, correctly? <laughs> so I was thinking about it one day or night and I thought do I believe it and and I said yeah I believe it Good and then like a day or two later I, I said something happened so I didn't say a prayer but I I believed yeah. and it kind of like I would your say eyes I was changed and, yeah. yeah so then and I <clears throat> I went to both churches for, for, I went for to the assembly of God in the morning and I went to the Mormon Church in the afternoon, yeah. and for three or four months, it was. And I, I liked the music, I liked the preaching, and we're reading the Bible. I, yeah. I I believed it, and and in the ward, I had friends there too. Yeah, sure. And some of them tried to talk to me about some of my questions, but nothing was sticking by then. <laughs> it was it was just, well. I mean, it would be me. What about this? What about that? Yeah. Uh, it was, um, what about forgiveness? Yeah. You know, what about, um, and that was the bottom line. If I go to the temple, if I pay my tithe, if I do everything I can possibly do, which I, I'm yeah. not sure I can do everything I can do anyway, yeah. but then am I really going to feel, am yeah. I, what's going to happen? I mean, I would still have to continue I mean, there would be no end. It, w it was a heavy load, yeah. really. And, and there was the contrast by then of... of Seeing the, the Christian worship and, and the Mormon 
And it's just not about Jesus, is it? And uh, what do you think the difference is there in, in Mormonism? What, I mean, well, Jesus is there, but what, we don't worship him. Or... No, that's... And it's, it's been a few years since I've been <laughs> there. I think by mixing... To me, the Bible... God is somewhat apart from us. God says, I am a whole, I, the Lord your God, am holy. Yeah. And he tells us to be too. But... But he, but he also knows we fall short. But we have the buts. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. He's holy. He's yeah. over there, but he's our friend. He doesn't, well, he hates sin. So yeah. we shouldn't take it lightly. We shouldn't, well, God will forgive me this time. Well, you hope he does. Yeah. You better respect God. Don't. And that's one thing I would say I learned in, in our family and as a Mormon, that at least God is real. God yeah. cares. And God is watching us. He, he knows. Yeah. And so <clears throat> the thing is, is where they're, and they're convinced. I don't say they're not convinced. I don't say they're lying. They're doing a show, but more and more. But read the Bible. Follow the Bible. I, I and tell learn them. really what, what grace is. Right. What works are. See, see the law. Get yeah. a good understanding who Jesus is, who, who the, the one yeah. true God. And... But when you mix, when you put Jesus as your older brother and he's uh, just leading you he's, and you're following him and, and you can do it, you can be, be therefore perfect, you can do that. Well, if you can, mixing that with, um, you need Jesus, it's not that you don't need Jesus, but mixing you, you've diminished Jesus and, yeah. and he hasn't. He's not the savior he, that he really is. He's our helper in yeah. Mormonism. He get it clear, clear, clears things up at the end or something, doesn't he? Right. So there's a lot of vagueness. You talk to a lot of Mormons and, and you bring up these questions and you don't get good answers. No. We feel like there's... So they, they're depending on their self too much. And... and no, I, I knew I was a sinner. I knew... Yeah. As We're a teenager, <laughs> I, I didn't make it. I, I mean, I did my best. I tried. I, sure. I pay. You know, I tithed. I did everything. Yeah. I didn't drink. I didn't really. But isn't there <laughs> such a freedom in trusting in God and Jesus that uh, that paid for our sins and the cross? Does that mean something different to you now as a yeah, Christian? Yeah. <laughs> it. Um. As a Mormon, it makes some sense in a worldly way. We don't have the cross because uh, we don't want to emphasize his death. But the, the thing is, his death brought life. That's right. Yeah. And so, yeah, the cross was, a ba it was an evil, shameful thing. It says in the Bible, it says in Hebrews, Jesus despised the shame. So it wasn't like the cross is, is but, the, but because... And one time my brother asked me, it was Good Friday, he said, what happened on Good Friday? I said, God saved the world. <laughs> <laughs> and Died on the cross. On a, on yeah, his Friday. blood, that's what it says, the blood and the cross. It says yeah. it in about every book, I mean, yeah. from Acts to, to Peter to, yeah. to Hebrews Romans. And, yeah. So the blood that came out, when both from his hands, from... And from the spear that yeah. John specifically testifies, it worked. That's yeah. that's the blood that that saves. And once you see that and understand it, and then tie that in with all the questions that Mormonism is full of. Well, yeah, the I mean Mormons I think they maybe have a little better answers about creation or something. They have Moses, Abraham, and the temple. You have these different accounts. In reality, they add to more confusion. They don't clarify issues. Uh, how was the earth created? Was it evolution or, or, did, or God's word exactly? There's no clarification there. Even evolution, is that true or false? How did creation happen? I would urge the prophet, give us the answers now. When does life begin? <laughs> now, is that at conception, which we think the Bible teaches? Yeah. So we don't need those answers that don't that aren't answers, <laughs> and um, 
Well, I'm, I'm really impressed with your journey and studying your way basically out of the church. I think that, are there things that you, you've learned or continue to learn that, that surprise you? Have you read any of the church essays, for example, and you're aware of those? I've read them a little. I need to, need to print them out and read them more and hand them uh, out. Yeah, but something. it's interesting that the church would finally, things that people were being excommunicated for just a few years ago, the church is now coming out admitting Joseph Smith's polygamy and stuff, things that I, I didn't know about at all. But Yeah, I, th I think you're in a position to meet more people. I, I yeah. haven't talked to a lot that are excommunicated and the reasons, but I, I understand more now yeah, yeah. that, yeah, they are admitting they're, they're waffling. To me, I would say to even the, a Mormon watching to Mormons, I would say the Mormons are Christians. They're apostate Christians like a lot of Protestants, yeah. like a lot of Episcopals, a lot of, there's good and bad Presbyterians. Certainly not the, the Jesus of the Bible, it's, it, but it's, uh, it is a Jesus that they, well, you've got a few minute, a minute or two left. You, what would you say to your family and friends and I'll just say I, people I'm, listening? I'm glad we've talked what we have. I, I hope some relatives see this somehow. <laughs> by God's mercy and miracle, and I'd like to talk to you more, I would say to good Mormons, really do it. Are you really counting on your works, your perfection, your whatever, your tithing or temple going to make a difference, or the handshake in the temple? Yeah. I mean, that's towards the end bothered me. If I can't get in by what I did, is a handshake gonna make a difference? Why should it? Yeah. Did you realize that was all from masonry? Yeah, I... Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Uh, the signs and symbols and the tokens and the handshakes and everything. The yeah. words, even the words that are used are all masonry if they look, uh, check that I out. I would say do it and Paul has some strong words. I can't remember where in Ephesians. He says something like, if it's by works, it's no more grace. That's right. If you can't mix your works and, and Jesus' works. <laughs> Jesus' works and Jesus' life is far above ours. Yeah, and that's the grace he offered. He never sinned once, yeah. ever. Yeah. And it's so, by, so we can't say, well, I'm... It's but, by his righteousness but, that we're cleansed. Amen. Well, Kevin, we're almost out of time and great story. You've had a great journey. You're married and uh, to a Christian lady. Hi to Isabel. Okay, and uh, well, that's wonderful. And I appreciate you sharing your story. I know that I hope that there's some family and friends that will listen and maybe just do a little research and read the Bible. I'd suggest they read a red letter Bible. That's good. Anyway, thank you for, for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Ex Mormon Files. <laughs>